It's been four months since Meghan Markle launched American Riviera Orchard, and we still have absolutely no sellable products. We still have no strategy. We still have no idea actually what the brand will be about. We just have rumors and hearsay and all sorts of things. But apparently, Meghan is very, very excited as she has been able to get 100,000 emails on a mailing list for the brand. Because, of course, the first thing she did was launch a social media site with a pretty banal video where you couldn't really see anything that only lasted like 15 seconds. And then a website where you could sign up for an email that may give you some insight into what's going on with American Review Orchard. And that was four months ago. You don't even get a welcome email. In fact, the whole email system has just sat there literally collecting dust for the last four months. And because of that, it's entirely untested for Meghan Markle. In fact, I would argue that this has been another huge, massive business mistake for her. Because when it comes to emails, when it comes to marketing and everything, you really want to engage with your audience. And that is the one thing She's not doing. Her audience at this point is her friends and family. That's and the small amount of family she has. Is that's it pretty much because they're the only ones getting any American Riviera Orchard product. And as far as we're aware, apparently according to reports, that's not even the product that she will ever sell. So what like this seems like a personal craft project that has somehow turned into this major event. But when it comes to the email list, while 100,000 is definitely very, very good, I also see a huge amount of problems with it. Because when you are doing email marketing and those sorts of things, you need to have more there than Meghan Markle currently does because she doesn't have anything there. She All she has is an idea, a notion. She doesn't have any actual products yet. This is not hard, guys. You need actual products you can sell. That is what you need. That is what she has failed to produce yet. And because she hasn't produced this yet, I think she has some really, really big problems going forwards because she has failed to do the simplest thing, which is, again, connecting with her audience because she has had four months to really cultivate that email list because it could be when she finally launches whatever initial product it is, she might have a massive amount of unsubscribes because the one thing you can't do once you sign up for Meghan Markle's email list right now is unsubscribe because there are no emails. So your information is stuck in a system. Maybe that might never see the light of day. So we're going to talk about this today because if you don't know anything about marketing strategy and email strategy and everything, I've actually done it. So I can give you guys some of my ideas and some of my thoughts about the situation. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany and I provide you all compelling royal commentary about the latest news and sometimes a bit of the drama going on behind the scenes. So if you guys want to hit that subscribe button, that would be absolutely awesome. And, and this video could be a prophecy, but it also could be an epic failure as well. I guess you could say if Megan all of a sudden finally launches her brand by the time I get this video uploaded, because I don't know when that will be. But I have some really big doubts at this point because it doesn't seem like Meghan Markle has a plan for her brand like at all. And it could be that obviously she's formulating and everything, but she should have had this together months ago, like months and months ago. She should have had this all formulated and together before even launching the brand. We should not see this idle period where absolutely nothing is happening. I mean, there could be a ton of things happening, but you don't really want to ever launch the brand until you actually have something going. So for example, when I started my channels, I started out on Instagram and I found it really hard to grow on Instagram. So I kind of gave up Instagram. I still am on there from time to time, but not as closely as I was. And so I actually grabbed this handle on YouTube, but I did not upload a single video until I was ready. So I didn't even tell anyone that the channel existed. I knew it existed. I had it, but I didn't tell anybody else. And when it came to the fashion channel, I think I had that for a little bit before finally having something to post because you need to be able to say, yes, I have started X, please watch X. But she doesn't have any products. And I think the biggest failure right now is this email list. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh man, this is an epic failure in many ways. So this is from the New York Post, although it was originally in Us Weekly. It says, Meghan Markle is very pleased with American Riviera Orchard's strong start. It's like, well, it's not a strong start. It has nothing yet. It has nothing. So it says she is very pleased about the strong start to her new lifestyle brand, according to an expert. And it seems that everything is going according to the Suits alumni plan. Now, it's kind of weird a bit because it's, there, there shouldn't really, there should already be a plan. Like, was the plan just to 
announce it and then do nothing and then kind of keep going, that's just kind of not a great plan. And that goes on to say, for the rollout of American Riviera Orchard is already off to a strong start. The website has over 100,000 who have signed up to hear about the first products launched. Megan is very pleased and with the early interest it has gained, the insider went on. She's so excited to see how many people enjoy her products and use them in their everyday lives. But the big problem at this point, of course, is that there are no products, Meghan Markle. Nobody can enjoy your brand until you have products. You launched your brand with zero products and it sat there for four months. The only thing we've gotten is a series of ridiculous Instagram posts from your friends on products apparently that you never plan to launch. That's just absolutely silly. I mean, just from a business perspective, it would be like Netflix launching and telling everybody, hey, we've launched Netflix, but they didn't have any streaming rights to anything. And they didn't have any DVDs. Like when they started and you used to order DVDs, they don't even have any DVDs in stock. They're saying, oh yes, we're going to be the next great thing, but they have no product. They have no market. Like you you can't do that. It's not a great way to do that. And I feel like it's a very arrogant approach because she's just banking on her name being able to sell a crap ton of stuff. And it might, it might. But the thing is, Harry and Meghan's brand, as Pat Tillman's mother very cleverly pointed out, is divisive and controversial. And because of that, she has already shrunk her market share. Her market share is already smaller than it should be because she remains a deeply controversial and divisive figure along with her husband. So she has already sectioned out part of her market. And the way to get some of those people back, potentially, especially the people who are on the fence, is to create a decent business. And one of the just key easy ways to do that is to launch products, have a great business plan in place. But this seems to be the blind leading the blind because there just doesn't seem to be anything there. And when it comes to email specifically, I've actually handled in a professional setting marketing campaigns via email or email newsletters. And what I find is that Megan just made a key mistake, number one, by just gathering all these emails and doing nothing with them. Because what she hasn't been able to do is weed out the people who aren't interested in the first place. Because every time you send an email, depending on how big your email list is, you do have to pay for those. There is a platform or whatever where you do kind of sort of have to pay for something like MailChimp that's that big that can handle that load of emails. And at this point, you're sending all these emails to people who have you maybe have gathered over these last four months, if that's even true. You are sending them to a bunch of people who maybe signed up for a joke, maybe gave you a fake email. You have no clue how many bounce backs you'll get, how many people are really not interested in your products and just are looky-loos because you have no way right now currently to weed out that email list. Zero way. Zero way to weed out the email list. And zero way for people like me who did sign up because it's like I'm a journalist, I follow things, and I need to be able to look and see what's being sold and hopefully hear about things. And at this point, I, I as a consumer, I have no way to exercise my right to not get emails. And so do anybody else who signed up for that email. You cannot unsubscribe for that email because she has not sent an email. There wasn't even a welcome email. Because what you do in email marketing is that when somebody signs up for your email, you usually send them what they call a welcome email. And this explains what's going to be on the emails they receive weekly, monthly, every other day, every day, depending on how, how you structure things. So if you're a daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, you have an email list. And so a bunch of people have email lists. And the, the thing is, is that when you have a big email list, you need to be able to manage that because a certain amount of people that you send an email to will bounce back will cancel or won't do anything with it. And that might be actually a big chunk because the average email open rate is only 21.5%, which is pretty good. And then in education, agriculture, financial services, it can average between 25 and 28%. So Megan is already looking at a situation where she might have a smaller open rate to begin with. So that means just people looking at the email and opening it. Now, for her first email, this might be quite large because people are curious. But if it's also in the mainstream media, people might not look at the email. So if she was smart, and I have no indication at this point her team is really all that smart, what they would do is they would cultivate and have, let's say, an every other week or a weekly email newsletter that they have been sending out for the last several weeks. Because that way you can grow and cultivate and eliminate waste within the email list and highlight your best people, the people who click on it the most, the people who interact with it the most. That is what you should be focusing on. And it doesn't have to be products you're selling yet. What it could be is just lifestyle stuff, simple lifestyle stuff. 
I mean, how she hangs out on the veranda in her $3,000 Carolina Herrera tool skirt for seemingly no reason, playing with her dog. Maybe other people might find something connectable to that kind of lifestyle. And she might find a group of people who really like that kind of stuff. But I think without sending out emails, without starting a narrative, it's, it's just a waste. It's just an absolute waste because what's the first email you're going to get? Oh, give me money because I have a product. That That's that's one of the, the faults here is that if her first email is, this is my product, you should buy it potentially as consumer and like, I signed up for your email months ago. You did nothing to ingratiate yourself to me. And now you're immediately asking me for money. Well, then I won't do that because I, I don't want to just give you money without you actually engaging in a relationship. Because I feel like so much anymore is that services, brands and everything, they're trying to cultivate a relationship with their potential consumers. And the stronger the consumer is connected to the brand, the more likely they're going to be to buy, even if that's not something they particularly like. So for example, like I bought this shirt from the loft recently because I can always use a new t-shirt. I'm, I'm not super big into yellow, but I decided to buy it. Or I really wanted this cross necklace for Anna Lucia and I asked them for it. And I was so excited to get it because I've wanted one of these for so long. And when it comes to this jacket here, it's like I saw it and it's a brand, a Royal Wear. So this is a Veronica Beard denim jacket. I thought it was amazing. And I found it for a great deal. So I bought it. And I, I got connected with the brand because of a Royal. And as I looked at it, I found it really interesting. Now, I think it's actually more kind of a 30s brand, I would say, in terms of like, I think their best crowd is probably the 30s crowd, those who are in their 30s. And I really like that, 30s to 40s, I think, young moms and everything, that's kind of where their brand cultivates. And so I saw this thing talking about how it was two women who started the brand and everything. And I don't know if they're both named Veronica or what, but as they cultivate this brand, they could make it. So we want to give the working mom a great wardrobe. That's kind of kind of their, I think, their angle a bit from what I've been able to tell. I haven't looked too closely at it. So because of that, they get things that are both professional and yet also sort of age appropriate. You could say they tend to be not too short, not too skimpy, but they you know, there's a couple of things that can be because there's some ladies who are in their 30s who look absolutely fantastic and maybe have great legs, which I do not. But anyways, that is how they've been able to cultivate this brand. At this point, it's been four months and we know nothing about what American Riviera Orchard is really truly all about. We know nothing. And her email newsletter, especially if she has 100,000 people on there, that should be the first thing she does is craft a narrative via a newsletter that comes out maybe every other week, every week to get people excited about the launch. At this point, I'm just like, so is it tanking? Can you not get the trademarks? Is this brand defunct? Like you have no clue what's going on. And again, this is like marketing 101. This is marketing 101. You want to connect to your audience. That's what you want to do. You want to connect with them. And what Meghan Merkel has not done is she's high and lofty right now. She's still acting like a royal. And she still has the mindset of what she thinks a royal is. So I feel like she's being, in some ways, very elitist. Because what the thing is she's not doing is connecting with her audience, trying to connect with her audience. And of course, the Sussex Squad, they'll buy whatever she puts out. They don't really care. They could be falling apart and they'll still buy it because they're obsessed with her. But when it comes to the broader audience, she needs to be able to connect with them. And she has yet to do it. And one of the big problems that she's had for many years, I think, is that she's she's trying so hard and, and she's so contrived that she comes across as fake. And I, I found that really interesting because I read this on my live stream. And I love this on my members only live stream as well. But I, I love this sentence because I found that, that it encompassed Megan still. And this was while she was supposedly in school and says, Megan's willingness to help others and her drive to excel meant she often was deemed fake by classmates at school who felt it was impossible for anyone to be that perfect. And it goes on to say though, well, Megan didn't think of herself as perfect. And I don't think she necessarily does, but I think she's trying to portray the perfect image and that's what's not working. It, it doesn't connect because no one's perfect and people thrive. They love authenticity. They love it. So even if you're not the perfect size or something like that, they, they appreciate someone who's honest with them. And I try to exemplify that level of authenticity. And so 
people can like it, people cannot like it, whatever. But Megan has failed to do that. And, and, and the newsletter written in her voice would be a great way to go. And I don't know why she hasn't done that. I mean, she could even do a behind the scenes of what's going on with American Riviera Orchard. Where are we filming today? Who are we talking to? Like, get people excited. Because at this point, it's just going to be a blah all at once without a good buildup. Because this is not a buildup. This is just a what the heck is happening. That's what this is. It's like, what the heck? And so when she finally launches something, it'd be like, okay, fine. Finally, finally, people are relieved rather than telling us and giving us a narrative of what the brand is, why she decided to name it this and all these sorts of things. And again, I think it's an elitist mindset in her mind that she's a real and she doesn't have to do those things. But Megan, you, you are running a brand now. You are running a company. It's not like being a real anymore. You got to stay start getting out of that real mindset, which you never really understood in the first place, to be quite honest. She never really understood what being a royal meant. She really didn't. And so it's, it's all a, a made up in her mind. And so she is not connecting to people. She's not connecting with her audience because she's too high minded to understand what she needs to do to create a good brand. So at this point, she's failing. This could fail. Not to mention the fact she might waste a boatload of money on leads that are dead. And she could be throughout this whole time as she sends out this newsletter every week, weeding out people who don't care about what she's doing. But because she's not weeding them out, she's just gaining a bigger and bigger list, which she'll have to pay more for to send emails out. I, I, I can't say this for sure. I have no idea. But let's say she does have 100,000. I think that might be a little high, but there's a lot of journalists and people who have signed up. But what if 50% of the people unsubscribe immediately? Well, you could have saved yourself some money and some time by not emailing 50,000 people who never cared in the first place about the brand. Or it could be that you have Sussex Squad members who have signed up 12 times with 12 different emails and you send 12 emails to the same stinking person, which is a waste. But again, I feel like if you had an actual good business mindset, what you would be doing is you would be building the brand, building the audience by telling the story. Like, why does she name it American Riviera Orchard? No idea. And why is, if her first thing is going to be rosé wine, why does she name it Orchard? Like, what is the point? Does she have an orchard? Is Orchard like a, a key part of her childhood or something? Because at this point, even the brand name doesn't make a ton of sense. And the brand name really pigeonholes her because now everything must come to, from Montecito, Santa Barbara area because she essentially named it after it. It's, it's a very uninspiring name. It's very long. It's very convoluted. And she has yet to explain any of that. It might actually even be better if she could explain it or could go with just ARO or something like that. But she has yet to go with that. She has yet really to do anything. I, I Again, I'm still so confused about what this brand is really going to be about at the end of the day. And you can think it's just because I don't like Megan. It's not really that. It's just I don't even understand what the brand is. I could get behind something because it'd be nice that they could just leave the royal stuff behind and actually just be who they want to be, which is Hollywood people. And this, again, is the divide with her brand. She wants to connect with people, but, oh, heaven forbid you don't call her the Duchess of Sussex. You can't do those two things at the same time. If they want to have a brand like this, they need to just let it all go and commit, fully commit to being business people, not try to do this half in half out thing, which is what they've tried to do the entire time. They've tried to be half in half out. They've tried to create their own little pseudo cosplay royal land over there in the UK, in Montecito. And unfortunately, sometimes when you're trying to do everything, nothing is accomplished. And that's how I feel like Harry and Meghan are like right now. They are doing a variety of different things. Harry gets the Pat Tillman Award, but then he's also doing a documentary about how much he hates the media. Oh, and then he's doing a documentary on polo. Like none of those things connect. They don't, they don't connect at all. Because one's about Invictus, one's about his own personal bitterness, and the other one's about a personal passion. And so all these are together. All these are together. And none of it is working. None of it is working. And that's just, again, incredibly sad because it should all be working together. It should. It really should. But it's not. But it's not. So the way Harry and Meghan can easily fix this, especially Meghan, is by dropping that royal nonsense and really, really devoting to just being Meghan and Harry. 
business people. Because when you're trying to be Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and treating everybody else like they're your subjects, at some point, you can't really cultivate an audience unless it's people who would just like you, even if you were a bum on the side of the road at this point. Anything Harry and Meghan do to the Sussex squad, that is gold, apparently. But when it comes to everyone else, because that segment is small, I found that the, the more time I'm on Twitter and if – I get a negative comment and I look at their profile and it's all Harry and Meghan stuff. I just block them. It's just easier in the long run to do that. I, I don't really want to do that, but it's the only way that things can move forward in a, an appropriate and healthy way, I think. And I found that as I've done that, and I, I have a pretty decent list at this point, I found that I get less trouble anymore. I generally do. And so I got to wonder, how big is the Sussex squad? Because Megan might run through those people pretty quickly. And that might be great if she wants something small, but she made this huge launch. And so because of this huge launch, she needs to have a broad appeal. And she, I don't think has that. And she has done nothing at this point to amend her life or her image to basically appeal to a broad audience. Because at this point, it's just going to be her being, well, I'm a duchess and here I'm in the kitchen. I'm cooking. Isn't that awesome? And when it comes to the TV show, obviously the TV show is going to be a huge part of it. I understand that. It's probably not going to launch until the TV show is launched, but she never should have gone forward until the TV show was in the bag and about to come out. You don't go forward with a brand without anything to back it up because she looks just so incredibly foolish, amateurish. And if I was a brand, I'd go, yeah, no, because I know not to do that stuff and my degrees in history. And I even know that's a bad strategy. So guys, let me know what you think about this latest email list debacle. Do you think Megan has the right idea? Do you think ARO will finally flop hard? I'd love to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you oh so soon. Bye. <laughs>